Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik, and this is part two of the Getting Started Guide to the Smart Home right here on Smarter Home Life. This video, specifically, I'm talking about platforms. And you may think, oh, that sounds really complicated or difficult to understand. And the platforms as they relate to the smart home have changed over the years. So I want to describe this as simply as I can. And first off, I'm not here to convince you to switch from, say, iOS to Android or vice versa. You've probably already picked one of these big platforms. And of course, today they come with voice assistants and they come with some smart home smarts as well. HomeKit and Apple being the oddball because HomeKit is actually a smart home platform that you can connect sensors to. So it's not just a system where you bark out commands and it just responds. That's where Google and Amazon live right now with a little bonus of scheduling and some routines, but largely it is you bark a command to a smart speaker or perhaps you type something into your phone or something like that and then something responds. There isn't that much interactivity in terms of devices actually responding and, and acting by themselves. Let's jump into HomeKit first. HomeKit, for some people, I'm also not here to convince you to say if you're on iOS or you're in the Apple world that you must use HomeKit or again, the vice versa of you must use the Google services if you're on Android. Certainly not, you can choose anything you wanna do, although you really can't use HomeKit if you're on Android. But anyways, Apple's HomeKit platform, overall, it's good. A fairly wide variety of products is now available after a couple years of HomeKit being around. It's simple to use for most people, simple to set up, and simple to even create some little automations. But you will run into some walls and some stoppers with uh, HomeKit, even basic things such as, you know, making your lighting scenes a little bit more dramatic to where they take a few seconds, maybe eight or 10 seconds to change from, you know, your regular bright lights to a TV watching mode. Nope. On HomeKit, they just change over like a half a second, which is not that dramatic. Uh, so certain things not quite baked into HomeKit. Uh, you can hook up sensors to HomeKit and have automations happen. They've given some of the examples of if you have a, a door and window sensor on your back patio door and you have a smart light um, on that back patio, if you open the door, maybe the light turns on for 20 minutes and turns off automatically. Uh, perhaps if you have a motion sensor or a, let's say a water, uh, water leak detector, um, that it could turn a whole bunch of lights blue automatically if it detects water somewhere in your home. The other thing to look out for with HomeKit is buying HomeKit only products, specifically certain manufacturers, which make great products. And I don't mean to demean them such as Elgato and their Eve line of sensors and switches and uh, energy monitoring little smart plugs. Great products, but they only work with HomeKit. So you can't take them with you if you decide HomeKit isn't for me and I need to switch to something more powerful. You got to sell them and buy new stuff. So a cautionary tale there. Overall, HomeKit can be good for the uninitiated and for the newbie and it's built right into iOS. So now the other two, and I'll use air quotes, smart home platforms, they're really assistant platforms. And that's Amazon's Alexa, I'll refer to her as Lady A, and of course, Google Assistant on the various smart speakers and you know, for to a certain extent also on your phone. These are assistant platforms. They're really not true home automation platforms. But like I said in the first video, you may have been introduced to the smart home via one of these platforms because, well, it's a smart speaker. You can pair your lights to it and you can talk to your lights. How cool is that, right? But you can't pair sensors to the Echo or to um, one of the smart speakers from Google. Sensors make the home responsive automatically and they truly make it a smart home and not just a connected home that again, you bark commands at and you expect a response. So those are the assistant platforms. Then you're going to say, all right, well, if I want to graduate and do more with my smart home, how do I do that? 
Well, that's when you need to have something like an actual smart home hub. And this is a device that has radios on board that work with sensors and other products. They might be Wi-Fi, they might be Bluetooth, but there probably could be those other kind of techno terms like Z-Wave and Zigbee. Those radios work with things like sensors and these other devices, usually wireless products um, uh, like door locks and so forth. They don't work with, they don't communicate to your phone, so your phone has to communicate to the smart home hub and the hub has to go talk to those sensors. And all those smarts live on the hub. And these are names that you may be familiar with, like Smart Things and Wink and Lowe's uh, Iris uh, system that they have, and other names if we're getting into the weeds here with the uh, more advanced systems such as uh, Home Assistant, which is a software platform that is open source source. There's Indigo, which is what I use back there on the Mac. And there are a number of other platforms like Vera and I could go on and on. Anyways, these smart home hubs or platforms generally have all the smarts within them. You, uh, you either run them on a computer or a software system or the hubs are their own little boxes. And the technology and the commands stay within your home, uh, unless you're going out to the cloud um, because you're outside of your home and you need to see what's going on inside your home. With something like Smart Things and Wink, which are the two popular smart home hubs, you're going to say, well, how do I choose? Which one do I want? Smart Things ultimately is for the more of a power user, that you want to do more with your uh, devices, you want to have more variety of them. With Wink, it's a little bit on the simpler side, simpler to understand, simpler to set up. They call their automations robots, so it's kind of a cuter name. Each platform usually also tends to make their own products that go along with and work pretty well with their um, smart home hub. Sometimes you can use those products um, with other platforms as well. So things like sensors and switches and dimmers and little plug-in modules. Insteon tends to make the most of these devices. They make the tech, they make the proprietary Insteon radio to, uh, and you know kind of communications technology. They make all their own stuff and their own hubs and their own their own little hardware interfaces. Wink and SmartThings makes a handful of their own products and of course their hub. And remember, if we kind of go backwards a little bit, you can take those voice assistants. Yeah, Siri, not so much, is not gonna work with SmartThings or Wink. But if you're in the Google world or if you're in the Amazon world, of course you can link up those smart speakers and those smart assistants to Wink to smart things, to the Lowe's Iris system, to Insteon, to many of those other platforms, and then bark out your commands and get voice control. But those smart home hubs let you do so much more than these voice assistants do. They let you have those sensors that react and make your home smart and not just connected. And also with the flexibility to have not just smart switches, but keypads so you can have physical controls, which is another really important thing in the smart home that I've, I've done a, a little video on, to not forget the buttons. It's so easy to run things with apps and voice that we tend to forget. It's nice to actually have that physical muscle memory control of a button or several buttons that's always in the same place, that does the same thing when you press it, really important for the smart home. And with that, I'm going to stop before I give you too much more technical information, and I will see you on video number three.